Hi guys, I'm Max Kausch from AndesSpecialist.com and I'm here to talk about Aconcagua equipment. Uh, we have a lot to talk about, so we're going to break up the list uh, in a smaller bits. I hope you enjoy it. Well, the first bit of protection I would like to talk about is uh, sunglasses. Uh, for Aconcagua, we need um, um, uh, the category, the protection uh, levels have to be between two, uh, three and four. I would go for three and four. Uh, but the main thing you have to focus is that the sunglasses actually fit your face. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. This gap here, kind of a bit too big. So uh, you have to try them on. Uh, my Asian clients usually complain uh, about this bit of the sunglasses. So, um, I would uh, probably try different models and see how they fit on your face. Uh, they, they're not different than the sunglasses you use on the beach or anything. Uh, they just have a very good uh, uh, protection um, for the UV rays. They usually have a, a detachable uh, part you can take out. Uh, but these are basically the same. These are both a category four. Uh, they are actually pretty good. Uh, but I would try them on first. And on mine, I actually use that elastic band at the back, so they actually stay on my face. Uh, otherwise, I had to kind of have to frown to push them, and that might give me a bit of headache. Uh, to remind you, up there we are going to be dealing with um, maybe 15 to 17 times more uh, UV uh, sunlight than we normally deal down here. So uh, um, because of, uh, we don't have a, as much filter up there and we don't have a, we have a snow reflection. So anything that comes in in the atmosphere is reflected back. So you're looking at maybe 15 to 17 times more uh, UV light. So uh, uh, I wouldn't stay with sunglasses, without sunglasses uh, for maybe uh, 15 minutes. I think that's, uh, that's a, a dangerous uh, time to spend without sunglasses. You will also need uh, ski goggles uh, for um, some conditions, especially the, during the summit push, we might have uh, some traverses to do and there might be some flying snow, especially if there's a storm. Uh, hopefully we get to the summit just wearing, just get away, we're wearing that, but it would be good to carry that just in case uh, we have flying snow. Uh, the thing is with these sunglasses, they kind of block the snow. When the snow is flying in, the snow comes in and clogs up inside, so you do need um, uh, ski goggles. Uh, I would go for the ones that fit on, well on my face and the ones that have double lens so they, uh, they don't fog as much. That's a big problem in the mountains, the, the condensation, the, anything, the sweat that comes out of our face. Uh, if you have reading glasses, uh, option you have is to fit your reading glasses inside your ski goggles like this and then put it on your face like this. Uh, it's not the best option, there are many more. We can actually buy prescription lenses for these guys. Uh, those can be quite expensive. I would say the cheapest uh, and the best way um, to climb these big mountains, if you have uh, reading glasses, is to buy the maybe three or four Jobo models that allow uh, you to fit um, special prescription uh, reading glasses inside. They actually fit over here. Uh, you buy those, those are very cheap, and uh, you actually put the prescription lenses inside and clog, uh, like clip them in and then wear them. I think that's a good option if you have uh, reading glasses. Well, the next item uh, is a hat, a woolen hat or an, a Polytech hat, uh, any of them. That would be for the nights, uh, even the low camps that can be quite cold at night. I will go for the deeper ones you can actually fit your ears inside. Uh, and then two bandanas like this, uh, one for the head, covering the back of your head, so you, you actually uh, you don't get as burnt up there. And another one to cover your mouth. Uh, I wouldn't just cover like this, I would angle it like this. Uh, I do that because of the uh, dry air, the dry air, the air can be quite dry up there. Uh, we're talking about maybe 8% uh, moist in the air, it's very low and uh, people usually develop uh, altitude cough because of the dry air and then later they can evolve to an infection so it's, uh, it's actually very important to have a, a simple item like this can uh, actually save uh, your expedition. 
An important note uh, about wearing a bandana together with the sunglasses is that when you put the sunglasses on, do not cover your nose because uh, all the moist comes out through here and then uh, it sticks, or it fogs your sunglasses. So I only cover my mouth or half of my mouth. I wouldn't cover the whole thing all the way to the, to the sunglasses because of the fogging. Uh, and up there can be quite hard to remove the fogging after it freezes. Well, a balaclava is an uh, optional item uh, from our list. Uh, if you do bring a balaclava, some people have a, feel very a lot of cold in their faces, so they prefer taking balaclavas. But if you do take one, I would not take one that covers your mouth. You don't have an option of not covering. Because the reason for that is that when you breathe out, the moist condensates here and uh, you actually have uh, ice, so you cannot breathe. So uh, I personally prefer having two bandanas uh, instead of uh, one balaclava. So I can actually wiggle around with them, spin around my head, uh, it works better. But if you do prefer bringing a balaclava, make sure it allows you to do that. Some of them have nets here and they actually freeze up during the summit push. Another important item for uh, Aconcagua, we're not going to use it in lower camps, we're only going to use it uh, in a high altitude and during the summit push is a helmet. Uh, we, do have, uh, we don't have technical bits in Aconcagua, we, but we have a traverse uh, between 6,500 and 6.7,000 and then we have the Canaleta, which is a gully uh, that starts at 6.7,000 and it can be rolling rocks on the way down. So, uh, we carry a helmet with us uh, in the hope not to, uh, to use it. Uh, I would uh, worry about the size, how much adjustment you have left in order to wear it with a hat or anything that allows more space in the head. While a good head torch uh, is necessary for Aconcagua, I wouldn't go for a hand uh, torch. I would go for a head torch. You need, you need uh, hands free on the way to the summit. Uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't worry much about the lumens. I would worry just about the, the insulation it has. Um, that they don't make them, they make some waterproof, but I worry about the, the ones that are resistant to water. And the main thing is the batteries. Uh, if you do want to take a spare head torch, if you're going with two people and one spare head torch for two uh, is okay. But the batteries, I will go for the lithium uh, batteries. They actually last maybe five times longer than the other ones. Uh, when we're in very cold conditions, this is a, a, a chemical reaction that happens inside the battery to deliver power. So uh, uh, these batteries, they have uh, less capacitance and they deliver more power. So they're ideal for these uh, winter conditions that we're going. Well, you definitely need uh, um, sunscreen at uh, all times while you're climbing these mountains, especially on the, in the high camps, anything above four and a half thousand. Uh, you have uh, a lot of UV light uh, coming into the atmosphere, so you have to wear that uh, a lot. And uh, lip balm. I uh, will go with one that has a FPF, uh, FPS protection, maybe 30 or 15. I wouldn't worry much uh, about that. Uh, and also uh, drugs, uh, if we actually have most of the drugs that you might need uh, in Aconcagua, we have actually a very big medical kit and we do daily checks on everyone in every camp. We check the oxygen levels, uh, we check the heartbeat and we uh, use this uh, table called Lake Louise table. It's actually uh, uh, very good for, for, for preventing problems from happening. But uh, I would recommend everyone to bring their own ibuprofen. Ibuprofen, uh, aspirins, they actually can prevent um, uh, frostbite from happening. And uh, loperamide or imodium, that can be used for diarrhea. But don't use any drugs without telling us. Uh, I would just recommend it to have it with you and we can uh, uh, talk about while we're on the mountain. Uh, Diamox is not a drug uh, I would take uh, before I go to altitude in Aconcagua because it's a diuretic drug and uh, you actually lose a lot of water. Aconcagua is different than other mountains like uh, in Nepal or, or, or Kilimanjaro. These mountains are very, uh, they have more moist. So Aconcagua is very dry. So uh, realistically, we're talking about five to six liters a day. If you're taking Diamox, you have to drink five to six liters a day. So that by itself is, uh, is logistically very hard. So 
I would not take Diamox on this very specific mountain. Uh, Central Andes, uh, Atacama Andes, all these dry mountains uh, are not places I would take Diamox. I would take it maybe if I do have a problem, if I have a hard time acclimatizing, yes. If I have a sleeping apnea, yes, that's, that'll be a good uh, time to take it. Any questions you have, uh, please post it under the video or just send it to us at info uh, andis specialistcom